Employees Killing Time. Yes, we're going to talk about employees killing time today. Hi there, I'm Angela Brown, and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question, and I get to help you find an answer. Now, this show is brought to us by housecleaning360.com. It's an international database of the best and the brightest home service providers in your neighborhood. So if you are a house cleaning company and you are not listed on housecleaning360.com, get over there and get you a listing because when people start calling, I want them to be able to find you. All right, so today we have an epic show for you. 15 ways that employees steal your company resources by killing time. And because it is such an epic show for you, I've broken it up into three parts. We're going to have three short segments and we will do it one day after another so that we can cover the 15 reasons why employees kill time and what you can do as a manager to prevent that from happening. All right, so this is part one. Now, as a business owner, you are responsible for managing the company time. Yes, you're responsible for managing your own time and maybe the time on the schedule of your employees. But you are responsible for managing company time. Time is a resource just like money. And if you blow all your money, well, then you're broke. And if you blow all your time, you're also broke. So one of the the things we're going to cover today are 15 ways that employees steal company time. Okay. All right. So killing time number one are taking coffee and cigarette breaks. All right. I understand coffee and I understand cigarettes. I'm not a fan of either one of them, but I understand them. And I understand that there are employees that do both. But the the secret is this. We do not want to do coffee and cigarette breaks on a client's time. When you're at a client's house and you are there to clean house, you are there to clean house. Drink your coffee, smoke your cigarettes before you get there and when you leave. But do not do it on the company time. That is not a responsible thing for you to do when a customer thinks they're paying you and you stop to run out and smoke for 15 minutes while the customer or the client is paying you. All right, killing time number two, that is chatting with coworkers. Now, a lot of times we send teams of people into customers' houses to clean the house and because they are the only two people that they see all day, they chat and they catch up and they become friends and they hang out with each other and they share each other's, you know, life stories and problems and all that stuff. That should not happen while they're at a customer's house. They can talk on the way to work. They can talk when they leave work. They can talk after hours and they can hang out in the parking lot and then they can have coffee and smoke their cigarettes. But they do not need to be sharing life stories and catching up with each other while they are on the clock at a customer's house. Not cool. All right, killing time number three. That is employees yakking at you. All right, you're the boss. And so when your employees show up for the day, they want you to say, hey, how was your day? How was your night? How was your weekend? And you got about 60 seconds to exchange pleasantries. Then let's get on with the business. If they spend 45 minutes telling you about their problems, you just became their therapist. And as a manager of company time, you are not paying for company time to be someone else's therapist. So that is another way employees kill time. Number four is you killing company time, talking to your employees, sharing your problems. Now your employees are not your therapist. And so don't use company time and company resources spewing your own problems to the employees. Because if you are spewing information to the employees, they're not working. Okay. Now you're eating up their time and they're not working. So don't, don't use your employees as your therapist. All right. Killing time number five chatting with clients. This is where we spew our problems with our clients. Our clients talk to us or we talk to them. Now on your initial walkthrough with the customer, this is the one exception. This is a chance where you get to build rapport with the customer. You're walking through the house and you have a clipboard. And so you're making notes. You're making notes of the kids' names. You're making notes of the husband's name or the wife's name. You're making notes of the pets, the pets' names, what the pets eat, when the pets are, where the pets are going to be when you're actually doing your cleaning, you're making notes and things like that. So you have lots of conversations. And this is the one time where you're actually building rapport with that customer. You're making a connection, you're relating, you're connecting the dots, but you're not going to do that at every visit. When you get there, every time you've got 60 seconds 
When you arrive, you're going to put on your gloves. You're going to put on your shoes. You're going to pet the dog. How was your weekend? And then bam, you're going to get to work because that's what you do. Anything beyond that, you're wasting their time and you're wasting yours. Alrighty, that's my two cents for today. And until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it.